Is there like a spectrum of how on the take you can be? Are there ethical lines that you can cross? Some of it is money and then, is it possible to operate in a gray area that does not result in destructive ethical violations? I, 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 Deep I, I, ethical violations. I have no idea. I don't think, I don't think there is realistically. I mean, anything that kind of uh, supports some of these groups you know, you're supporting things of a horrible nature. Uh, there, I just posted recently on my Instagram account of a lady that was uh, in Guanajuato. She's one of seven recently assassinated women that are looking for their kids, basically. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, groups and organizations out there in Mexico, and some in Tijuana that I've actually walked with, who are taking control of trying to find the bodies of their kids. That's her up there. Maria Carmela Vasquez, a mother who searched for a missing son, was shot to death outside her home on Sunday. Her son, Osmar Vasquez, disappeared on June 14th. A 46-year-old woman is the fifth mother to be killed this year while searching for their missing loved ones. She was a member of the Penyamo Missing Person Collective. There's many groups out in Mexico who basically have given up on trusting the government to find their kids. Um, the number of missing in Mexico is a debated topic uh, because you know the government itself doesn't release uh, those numbers uh, or at least hasn't uh, done a good job about keeping them and or releasing them. Um, Mexico is a country that has industrialized body disposal. You know, uh, in Tijuana, we had the stew maker, the legendary stew maker, which is a, a guy that basically used caustic acid, uh, acid uh, to get rid of bodies at a massive level. So there's a separate operation for getting rid of bo bodies and murdering. The at people. least, at least in Tijuana, we saw that phenomenon, and I, I, it's it's obvious that it's it's going on all over Mexico. Who's having those discussions about? mass murder and getting rid of people. I've, I've been reading a lot about World War II recently and there's was aggressive innovation on the Nazi side of how to get rid of a large number of people. Because for the longest time, both the Soviets and the, the Soviets were more brutal with this. It's, it's literally, it's a engineering problem of how you kill a large number of people and get rid of their bodies. So the Soviets were more into uh, just laying people, laying people down into the grave face down and then shooting them in the back yeah. of the head and then doing that on mass scale. So you just let, pile people on. And then there was obviously innovation with the Holocaust in terms of gassing people and all that kind of stuff. I'm not sure exactly where these trade craft skills are coming from specifically. Um, you hear discussions of Israelis training some of the cartel groups back in the late 90s, uh, specifically the Ariano Fies cartel. There's a lot of stories about that a security specialist coming down and showing them things like how to make caustic soda, um, how to put uh, rocks inside of bodies and then chicken wire them around and th throw them into the ocean or, or, the, or a river so that their bodies don't float. And when you, you kind of- put rocks inside of body to make sure the body doesn't float. So you, uh, you open up the, the, the intestinal tract, put rocks inside, uh, you cut where tattoos are, or you take off hands and faces and throw them somewhere else and you wrap them in chicken wire. So make it not identifiable? Yeah, and throw them into a body of water. And this is this, this is a horrible thing, but it's there, actually- It's a craft, <laughs> it's a trade craft. It, it's, tra it's, it's trade craft and it's, uh, it, there's, a, there's a link to the US as far as that, that trade craft. You have to remember that uh, the United States had a thing called School of the Americas and, and the CIA and they showed things and a lot of that uh, stuff is out there uh, in the hands of people that are of that generation. So yeah. there's a manual. There's a manual somewhere. On, uh, like with chapters, and it's like how to get rid of the body. There's manuals out there. Uh, that... Under co time constraints, or what What are, how identifiable can the body be afterwards? What What are geographical constraints, all that kind of stuff. I think, I think that was common back in the early 2000s, uh, and maybe the, the late 90s when some of these things were going on. But they've lost even that as far as respect for the government or pe bodies being found. Right now, you, what you usually see is just bodies being burnt to a crisp and buried in a field somewhere. That's usually what you'll see. Uh, some of the groups like this uh, this woman, uh, that th this woman belonged to, basically taken upon themselves to go out to find uh, clandestine graves uh, in 
the outskirts of of, of, of the towns that they're that they live in, um, probing the ground with uh, these metal probes, and seeing if the uh, the whatever they encounter in the bottom of these uh, these clandestine graves stinks or not. Uh, if they find IDs or clothing, they kind of gather that and they basically present it to the investigative authorities in the towns or the states they live in, which basically they're doing their jobs. You know, over 90% of all murders in Mexico were never solved. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, so they, they've even stopped trying to get rid of bodies in that way, you know. 